Hello, I'm Steven, the Calculator Guy, and man, I have missed DeFi. So if you don't know, if you don't follow me on Twitter, um, I've been away in Mexico for 17 days now, uh, and that was because I got Omicron, me and my family got Omicron while we were over there, and we had to stay for an additional 10 days after our initial uh, planned stay. Um, <clears throat> if you were a Patreon member, you got to meet Idols and Kev, who sort of handled the questions there while I was away, uh, at least for the first week, and then I came back. And um, we also did a little bit of content there. I, I purchased a laptop just to just to do something while I was over there. But I am finally back. Uh, arrived last night, and very happy to be getting back into DeFi. So, of course, all of you know the market conditions are bearish right now. So we're going to be looking at a bearish strategy. Now, this bearish strategy comes from Johnny Time. He's a friend of the channel. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Um, I like the guy. Uh, if if you aren't following him, you know you can. He has very few followers, but he has good strategies. So. Uh, there, yep, giant time. Um, he is whom I got this strategy from, and it did very well for me. So uh, I tested out this strategy personally, and I made 33%. Uh, and so I'm here to explain it to you now, and, and the risks. And that was 33% over two weeks, so pretty good. However, uh, this strategy is not always going to bat that well. So the strategy is going to be, we are going to short farm tokens, right? Now, if you know anything about farm tokens, or anything about me and my videos about farm tokens, they trend towards zero, and net is a phenomenal example. So net is what I shorted <clears throat> and what Johnny shorted uh, in his explanation video, and we shorted somewhere around $20, and you can see, you know, it, it's gone down 9x since then, or by 90%, sorry. Uh, so it was a really good short, and so here's what we did, right? We found the farm token, or, or rather, we surfed. He surfed around on uh, different chains, looking for a a borrowing and lending protocol that would let you short bearish tokens. Now, of course, farm tokens are some of the most bearish tokens. So here, you can short net. Now, net has it had at that point incredibly high emissions, which means the net protocol was was printing and minting these, or at least emitting these these net tokens incredibly quickly as rewards for anyone providing liquidity so you go to a farm and you see incredibly high apys that's because they're giving you their farm tokens so much in such high volume which is going to hyper inflate this the circulating supply and decrease the price that's why all farm tokens trend towards zero um, and so he saw that you could borrow this token on agora now anytime you can borrow a token you can short it uh, traditional short just means you supply some sort of stable coin, in this case probably USDC because it has 7% APR, and then you borrow the token you want to short and then immediately sell that token for USDC or some stable coin, right? Then the token tanks and you buy it back. Uh, you buy back however much you need to repay your loan and then you keep the difference. So let's say you had $1,000, you bought net <clears throat> at $20, so you bought 50 of them, I believe that's right. Uh, and then it, it goes down by 90%. Well, you could buy that same 50 now uh, for 50 times 2 for $100. So you would have made a $900 profit. Um, that's like 80%. That's pretty good, right? So that's a true short. Now, it's it's rare that a token tanks 90%. So we got lucky with this one, I'm not going to lie. But it's not rare for these tokens to slowly go down by 5 to 10 to 20 to 25% over time, which is why... Uh, we opt for a slightly different strategy for we opted for a slightly different strategy. So um, what what Johnny recommended in his strategy and what I did uh, was to borrow that farm token, split it into an LP. So split it into USDC and net. So sell 50% of it for USDC uh, and then farm it on beefy. So you can see uh, you can no longer farm the USDC pair, but you can still farm the USDT pair for 179% APY. Now, notice this APY is lower than the APY here, the borrow APY, so you will have to be careful. When I started this strategy, the APY was something obscene where it was giving you 1% to 2% per day, which I think is... Not exactly sure, but it's uh, somewhere in the 7,000 to 8,000% APY, which is really nice. Uh, so that's what I started off getting. That's where I entered the strategy, and it worked out really well. Like I said, I made between 33 to 
uh, in a couple weeks. So I was very happy with the returns there. Um, actually, I made more than 33%. I made, well, it's neither here nor there. Uh, but it did very well. So what I want to show you is how to find more strategies like this and where it's really important to be careful with strategies like this. Now, in this case, clearly, uh, you look at the trend, it's mostly down. There, there wasn't really much risk happening. However, if I would have bought, let's say, here, very unluckily, if I would have shorted, and I would have shorted like 70%, and then it pops up to, you know, even $15, I'm going to get liquidated, right? And that's a bad time. So what you want to look for is a long and consistent uh, downtrend. This was not a long and consistent downtrend. This was one, two, three, four, five, six. This was six days, right? You want at least a week, or at least two weeks. And you're, you're starting to see that here. Uh, so <clears throat> granted, um, you know, it was a little bit risky. I started around here, uh, looking at this downtrend and knowing that net was short and then the market was going down, but it was definitely a risk. Okay, so let's look at some other examples. One token that people have wanted to use this strategy with is the MMF or MFF, I forget, MMF. But I think this is, this is too dangerous at the moment. And here's why. So you can short this if you wanted to, but look at that chart. It's not giving any clear indication of long-term downtrend. Uh, will it eventually be a downtrend? I think yes, absolutely, because it, it, it is used as emissions and rewards for uh, <clears throat> their farming and for some of their rewards. So it's anomalous in that it's a token that is part of a larger ecosystem that is doing very well in the Kronos network. So I wouldn't short this token personally. I wouldn't, not yet at least, but there are other tokens that I would consider shorting. Uh, one of them is quite big. And so it makes it much safer. Here's one that I would consider shorting cake, right? You all know cake. Anyone who's used the Binance Smart Chain is familiar with cake. Um, actually, I don't want to use the Wrap BNB pair because they have all these anomalies. Uh, with the cake token, I can actually use Trading View because it's a very popular token. It should appear there. Let's go to chart. And again, remember what we want to do is we want to collateralize some stable coin, borrow the asset we want to short, and then hopefully get some sort of yield on that short. So. Let's look at cake. <clears throat> Binance will have, of course have the most data. Uh, yeah, so let's look at this. Let's, this is a daily chart. Um, so I'm assuming this is November here. No, this is actually August. So uh, it's been very short, very bearish since August. That's a, an excellent bet in my opinion uh, that it's gonna continue in a bearish trend. We'll go to the four hour chart. You know, if you're looking to do this for just a couple of weeks, still very bearish. I mean, the, the biggest bull run I had that's July. Um, yeah, I don't want to see July. I want to see. Eh, let's look back to December. Yeah, so from December, the biggest it had was from 10 to 12. So a reasonable TVL, you're not going to get liquidated, right? You're absolutely not going to get liquidated. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's a dangerous thing to say. But one of the reasons I'm saying that is because the the market cap for this asset is over a billion dollars. Uh, <clears throat> if I remember correctly, yeah, 1.93 billion. So Cake has a very high market cap, which means it's not going to see dramatic upwards price action because that would require a ton of buying power, which you're probably not going to see on the Cake asset. Uh, so I'm relatively confident in that. So where would I short Cake? What's well, an excellent question. You can do that on, well, I would go to DeFi Llama. I would click on Categories. I would click on lending and then of course you can do your own research here right now you can look at all these different lending protocols and look for farm tokens uh, and then once you find the farm token you can see if you can find a yield on that somewhere else so <clears throat> i know that venus is a is a borrowing and lending platform on the binance smart chain so probably they would be a candidate for having the cake token click on the website click on launch the app i like this spiral here very cool uh okay and then you look at, you get to supply markets and then you have the bar market. So I'm looking at the bar market, right? Um, I might also look at XVS as a potential candidate, uh, but right now we're looking at cake. So they have cake. 
Now it's a 34% APR. What that means is, is APR, APY. So 34% APY, even better, which means it's like a 27% APR uh, that you're paying. So effectively what that means is whatever you borrow is going to appreciate an amount by 34% APY. Uh, so your borrow is going to increase, which means your TVL is going to increase, uh, but by a very low amount, right? It's insubstantial uh, daily increase. Um, okay, so you're shorting this asset. So what you do is you would supply maybe USDC for 3% <coughs> APY, then you would borrow the cake asset. And of course you want to get, you want to get a yield on that. Now, what you don't want to do is get a yield on just that. So let's go back to beefy and look at the Binance Smart Chain. I know I'm talking fast guys, but the basic idea again is you're shorting a farm token. So you're borrowing a farm token against your stable coins and then attempting to get a yield on that on a stable pair yield. And, and why do we want to do a stable pair yield? Well, excellent question. I'm so glad you asked. The reason we want to do a stable pair yield is because it gives us some protection and it makes this a safer strategy. Uh, if we do just the cake asset, you're not really shorting it. Effectively, what you're doing is you're borrowing cake uh, and then you're getting 61% APY. So you're you're getting like a 30% APY, right? Because you're paying 30%, you're getting 60%. Uh, and that's it. You're, you're not gaining as the cake token depreciates in value um, because you're, you're still holding that asset. You didn't, you didn't actually short it. Uh, so you're not making more money as it goes down in value. But if you sell 50% of it into a stable pool um, and then farm it for 80% APY, as cake depreciates in value, the stable coin will buy more of it and you're still getting APY and appreciation. Uh, and <clears throat> the the stack that you halved um, is also in stable. So you, you shorted it 50%, you're getting a yield on it. Uh, it'll be easier for you to pay back the loan and you're only half exposed to it. Um, so this is, in my, is definitely the better approach. Now, if you're really bearish on it, of course you can do a full short, but that's just not the strategy we're doing. We talked about that strategy in a different video. A full short, as a reminder, is just to borrow the token, sell it immediately for uh, a stable coin, and then just wait. Just wait for it to go down. Right, just wait for it to go. If you got here, that would've been great, but Look, is it going down consistently over this time frame? No, it's going up and down and, and sideways. So we're betting it's going to go down long term, right? Look at the daily chart. <laughs> Why is this uh, so squished? I want it to be wider. There we go. So we're betting on bearish long term, right? So we're going to be in this strategy for a few weeks, maybe a few months. Um, so in my opinion, <clears throat> uh, it's better to be getting a yield. It could be better to be getting a yield on that. I don't think the cake token is going to depreciate, um, from $6 to $1. Uh, it might, but I'm not, I'm not betting on that. So I, I would do the, um, BUSD cake pair and just let it ride. Just let it sit. And I would probably do, I would be say I would be comfortable with a TVL around 50 to 60% on that, depending on where uh, liquidation is. So it usually tells you, so if you click on the cake token, I'm assuming it tells me, uh, oh yeah, you have to go in the supply. So uh, ba -ba -ba. does it really not tell me? Supply APY, no, it doesn't tell me. But you want to know what your L LTV is. So if your LTV, um, or you want to know what your liquidation LTV is. So if your liquidation LTV is like 80%, then uh, you want to borrow up to you, but I would borrow between 50 and 60%. If your liquidation rate is 70%, of course, you know, take that down by 10% uh, and adjust accordingly. What you don't want to do is borrow the maximum amount because then if cake goes up at all, you're getting liquidated and you don't want that to happen. So give yourself a buffer uh, for sure. You know, I think at least 20 to 30% is a, is a smarter buffer. Um, if you think that cake might go up, obviously give yourself a bigger buffer. If you think cake's going to go down, you're really bearish in the asset short term, <clears throat> then, you know, give yourself less of a buffer. Totally up to you. Uh, now, if you want to find more strategies like this with higher APYs, higher APRs, or that tokens are even more bearish on than cake, like I said, uh, surf around on the lending, lending page on DeFi Llama 
and and look for protocols that are lending farm tokens and then see if you can find protocols that are lending farm tokens that you can then borrow and short farm so short farm means you're splitting in half with a stable coin and farming that pair all right that is it for this video again huge thanks to johnny time for this strategy uh huge thanks to farm tokens for having high emissions and, and being consistently bearish that way I can have strategies that are relatively uh, repeatable and um, not necessarily safe, but that are somewhat consistent in their performance. Uh, so, <clears throat> one more thing. I know I love DeFi. I know I like talking about DeFi. And I know there are a lot of protocols that people might want me to talk about, particularly node forks. Uh, while I do believe, and I've seen, these protocols do very well early on. They are, as I've said in other videos, PVP, which means there will be winners and there will be losers. Um, because the, there's no incentives from like VCs or foundations coming into those in order to pay out those rewards, right? It's other people's investments that are paying you. Uh, so am I invested in some of those? Of course I am. Am I ever gonna talk about them? Absolutely not. They're too dangerous for uh, most investors. If you wanna talk about DGen strategies, if you wanna talk about DGen protocols, by all means, either join the Patreon or send me a message somewhere else and we can talk about them. Uh, as long as I feel that you're an informed investor, I, would, I do not mind having those conversations. What I will not do is have those conversations publicly uh, in a place where people could misinterpret the information and and get wrecked, right? So one thing that happened is I did a video on uh, nine nine with with Wonderland Time. I did that back in October, October tenth, I believe. Uh, and if you did nine nine with Time then for a month until <laughs> November, you would have done phenomenally, right? You would have done really well. I don't know if if they have the chart here. Uh, <clears throat> no, this chart only goes back to December. Um, but yeah, it was upwards. Uh, what was it? Chart. Here we go. That's fine. I can leave. Um, but anyways, had you invested when I posted that strategy, uh, you could have done very well. Here's October, right? So October 10th is right here. Mid November is right here. So that's from 4,000 or I don't know. Uh, let's say let's say 6,000 to uh, mid November, <clears throat> 10,000, right? So not only were you, would you have gotten tons of price appreciation, you were also leveraged. You would have made it buku money on that strategy. Had you invested a month after I posted that video, you could have got wrecked or liquidated. And many people did get wrecked and liquidated. And I felt terrible, right? In DeFi, things are super dynamic, uh, which is why I'm going to focus on posting videos that are less time sensitive. Right, the strategy that Johnny has shown or that we have developed is a strategy that should work in the beginning of DeFi, in the middle of DeFi, at the end of DeFi, right? It should work whenever we're seeing uh, the farm token reach the point at which it is consistently going down or is it, it is consistently bearish. Uh, <clears throat> and if you can short it, fantastic, right? This is a strategy that should work regardless of market conditions uh, overall. Um, I mean, if we go super bullish, of course, you know, these more blue chip farm tokens might go up, but that's the basic idea. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about node forks. I'm not going to talk about the super degen protocols, at least not on the YouTube. I might talk about them in the Patreon or the discord where we can have conversations about them and I can, and we can, we can talk about them in real time so that people can invest in real time and not get wrecked. Um, okay. So that's that. Uh, yeah, if you want to join the Patreon, link in the description. Um, thank you guys all for watching. Um, seriously, I'm humbled by this whole experience, and I hope that I can continue to provide strategies that are intuitive, that make sense, and that fit a multitude of different investing strat or investing, um, I guess strategies, yeah, uh, or mindsets. And, uh, and that's about it. So, so again, the basic idea is you want to lend a stable coin, borrow a farm token, and you have two options from there. You can sh true short it, which means sell it immediately for stable coins and wait for it to drop and then buy it back and you have uh, leftover premium or uh, split it into a, a liquidity pool token and farm that as, the, as it depreciates in value, which is actually good for you. Um, because your loan will drop in value <clears throat> and while the uh, while the liquidity pool token that you have will drop in value it will drop 
smaller in value while also gaining APR and APY. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day.